And so Ephesians 3.20, now unto him, that's Jesus, just to make sure you know and get your self-righteous um, blessed assurance out of the way. You can't do nothing on your own. I know you think you're amazing. I know you think you're good. Your mama told you that, and we love your mama, we love you. But you just ain't all that. At the end of the day, you're jacked up, and you need Jesus. I know you got a lot of money. You're going to hell. You need Jesus. I got four cars and two women that my wife don't know about. You need Jesus. If not, she's going to cut you when you sleep. Oh, boy. I thank God for, for, a, for a wife with a sharp knife. I mean, keep, that and Holy Spirit keeps me straight. Amen. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, now unto him, that's Jesus, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I can ask and think about a lot of things. I've got a pretty crazy imagination when it comes to blessings, but he's like, I'll go above that. I'm going to upgrade you. According to, here, this is the part that most people leave out and don't memorize. According to the power that works in you. Every single one of you have power and have ability. That's called faith. Like, I don't know about, then you haven't read the Bible. You've got to get in the Bible and know what God's word says about your situation. Because the Bible tells you that in, in Romans, that in every person has been dealt the measure of faith. The measure you need for the moment you're in, God's given you. If you are believing, if there's something that you haven't experienced, it's probably because you don't have the faith to hold on to yet. So he's not going to give it to you because it would wreck you. Yeah. So that's my goal today. I want to talk to you today about staying full of hope. God has put dreams and desires inside of every single one of you. And every single one of you have, I know it, if you'd be honest, as bad as life's been, as crazy as life's been, as long as the days have been, you want, you, you want more out of life than what you've been experiencing. You, want, you have goals you want to accomplish. You've got situations that you're believing to turn around. But it's too often, more times than not, it, 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 it's taken too long. And so you've stopped believing and you've lost your enthusiasm and your desire to believe and hope in God. And I, I think we're all on the same page here. That's when the negative thoughts come along. I can believe God for a day. I'll give him a week. I'm cool with a month. At a year, I'm starting to question the sovereignty. A decade, uh, you're asleep. Where are you at? And it's amazing in, in, in light of eternity, we feel like we, ha we have the audacity to tell God what he should do with the plan he died for for us. But this is when negative thoughts come. And many of you, you'll get into this type of rhetoric. And, I, and you've heard me talk about this, especially in the last two months. Some of you, and, and we, I led you in a prayer you know, last week. But some of you need to come out of agreement with some of these things. Words like always and never, from a freedom standpoint, those are inner vow terms. When you use words like always and never, I'll never trust people again. I'll always be hurt. You're saying that you know better, God cannot, and so now you've officially opened the door your entire life to the enemy. And you need to come out of agreement with those things. I'm not saying all of a sudden people are going to die and you're going to wreck your car. I, I, I don't get into all that kind of morbid stuff. Things do happen and they're unfortunate. God is good. But I will tell you, as, as tough as life can be, why open the door to the enemy a little extra? <laughs> so some of you need to come out of agreement. Some of you have used words like always and ever, and you need to repent. Lord, I come out of agreement with these inner vows. And Lord, I, 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 I close every door to the enemy. You plead the blood of Jesus over your life and you begin to walk a new path that isn't crooked, but that is straight. Because a lot of you have rehearsed this. I've been there. You rehearse this. It, 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 it's your ongoing sermon and you're the only one listening to it. I, I'm always going to be hurt. I'm never going to get well. I'm never going to get out of debt. This child is never going to straighten up. And if we're not careful, we'll get discouraged and we'll just end up settling for where we are instead of moving on to where God has us to be. And I'm going to tell you, church, many times, more often than not, we miss out on God and we're blaming him for the things that we've created, for the problems we've created that he's already given you a way out of. And typically, the way out of is with your mouth. And we miss out on God's best because we gave up too soon. We didn't realize, most of you don't even realize today how close you are to victory. Just another few days of believing, just another few weeks of trusting, another few months of staying in faith, and you'd see the promise come to pass. But some of you are ready to give up right now, and you just made a pact with God last night. Give him some time. You've been going nuts for three decades. Give him longer than two days. 
Some of you right now, you're, you're on the verge of seeing a major victory. You are so close to seeing this situation in your life and your family turn around and the answer you've been praying about, it's right around the corner. You cannot afford to get discouraged. You can't afford to give up now. You can't afford to de defriend God. You have so much on the line. And some of you, if you would just stay in it a little longer, you're going to see God's absolute greatest miracle in your life begin to manifest because you're closer than you think. Hebrews 10, 35 says this, don't cast away your confidence for it will be richly rewarded. I like to be rewarded. I, I know some of you do too. Hey, I'm, hey honey, I, I, put away, I put away the plates. Well, well good job. Well, aren't you gonna do something? I did, I told you good job. You know, we, we, all, we, we always wanna be rewarded. And what this verse is saying is if we'll stay in faith, if you'll stay in faith, if you'll keep believing, church, if you'll keep hoping, if you'll keep your private encounters alive, I know you didn't feel good. I know you didn't sleep well. I know you had a fight with your spouse. I know you don't know where your kids are at. I know you feel like you're about to lose your mind. Don't forsake, again, the gathering of yourselves and your daily encounter with God every day. Keep doing the right thing because God promises you there will be a reward. One translation says, don't get discouraged. Payday's coming. Um, I'm the same way as, as all the people that work at this church as you are with where you work. Every single one of you know when payday is. And if it goes one day after payday, you are knocking on HR, you're flipping off your boss, you're ticked off at Jesus, and you've, you, you've Craigslisted your kids. I earned that money, give it to me. Oh, okay, we just had a little bit of a problem. A little, wait, wait, you, wait, I'm gonna sue somebody. And it doesn't typically happen every now and then. You might have an issue, you know, with your paycheck. But when it's payday, huh, uh, give me my money. Some of you have lost the same type of tenacity and faith with God. Now, I'm not saying you don't, you, know, you don't make no demands with God. But you have stood long enough, you have been faithful. You have done everything God's asked you to do. You have served, you've obeyed, you've given, you've sacrificed, and some of you have just settled up this way it's always going to be. You need to get aggravated at the devil and say, oh, you want, this is my payday. I am, I, I, I am owed this. I'm not moving until I hear from somebody. I'm going to hear from management because this is what is due to me. I have done everything he said I should do. Now you've got to do what you said you would do or somebody's going to call you out. Now it ain't going to be me. You need to get that same tenacity as if you're missing out spiritually because some of you have been robbed. Some of you haven't, haven't spiritually experienced rewards and emotionally haven't experienced rewards for decades and you've settled for it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't let a day go by on your job if you didn't get your money for, what you, uh, for all the time and effort you put in. You know that's true. So when you're tempted to get down, when things don't go your way, you need to scroll. Listen, some, you, you, you all, every one of you are professional scrollers. We got people that are 85 years old on Facebook for 15 hours a day. I, 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 I'm kidding. Probably not. But every one of you, most of you, are professional scrollers. And we scroll to see things we like and see things we don't like. And we get upset and we get ticked off and we get agitated. We want, it's amazing. The enemy will come along on your, on, 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 on your spirit feed and, and give you a lie. And you'll just stop and you'll just, you'll just soak it in. Keep scrolling past the lies of the enemy until you get to the promises of God, which are yes and amen, and say, you know what? I'm going to feed off this. I'm going to stop feeding off accusations. I'm going to stop feeding off lies. I'm done with, I'm done with doubt. I'm going to get my hopes up in Jesus' name. And you've got to tell yourself, get to a point where you tell yourself, you have to put it on, put it on the mirror, put it on your forehead. Get you a tattoo. Whatever you got to do to stay in the game. This may be hard. It may take a long time. But I know that God is faithful. He's put me in this family. He's put me in this church. He's put these kids in my life. He's put me in this job. And I'm not going to give up anytime soon. In fact, I'm never going to give up. I'll go when he says. I'll stop when he says. But God is in control of my life because I'm closer than I think. And while I'll just tell you one thing I've learned is whenever it gets difficult... And it feels like the intensity has just been amped up quite a bit. That's a sign that you're close to victory. When those lies, listen, are bombarding your mind and you're tempted, 
to get discouraged. You feel like, you know what, I'm done. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'll never have the child. I'll never have the breakthrough. We'll never have unity. I'll never have restoration. All this season, you want, you want to throw in the towel. You know at that point in time, it's definitely not the time to give up. And this is now not the time to back down church. This is the time to dig in your heels. This is the time to put on a new attitude because every single one of you, including your, this church and his church, we are closer than we think. We're not going to allow culture to dictate to us how we're called to live. They can say this, that, and the other, but we're going to stand our ground, declare God's word. Yes, love at all costs, but preach the truth. And we're going to do exactly what God's word says. This is not the time to give up. I know, I know you guys have a lot of stuff coming at you. Good. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I ever had a pastor tell me that. I'm thrilled with your trials. What? That's not a fun message. No, I'm so thankful that you're going through something. When people sit there and they don't tell me what's going on, they complain about what's happening, there's a big difference. I said, what's well, great? They look at me like they're ready to slap just, just my face off the schedule structure. <laughs> if you didn't go through nothing, you'd have no reason to believe him for something. And I know I'm not the only one. Sometimes the more you pray, the worse it gets. Like, you know, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start giving, and all of a sudden things just go haywire. I want to start start serving. The, the, your family life goes nuts. You know, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually start just being obedient and, and doing this, or maybe witnessing at, at work. All of a sudden, you and your spouse are at odds in more than you've ever been before, because he'll do everything he can to discourage you from the plan that God has for you. It is so easy to say, forget it, I'm done. This marriage is never going to work. I'm gonna, I'll never be able to raise these kids. This job isn't for me. This tithing thing isn't working. Can, can I just pastor you real quick? Instead of getting discouraged, instead of going, instead of going around all soured up, and listen, we get it. We, we said, you know, it's that old song, if you're happy and you know it, tell your face. That's what you need to do. Tell your face. Oh, I'm happy, I'm blessed. And tell your face. Oh, God is so good. Tell your face. Nobody knows it. You look, you look like you just ate prune juice, drank prune juice and ate black licorice. I don't know how any of you eat that black. No, some, I, we got people on our staff that swear by it. Now, I'm okay when the black is great, but the, the black, it, 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 tastes like, it, tastes like, it tastes like Bridgestone tires. God bless you. you got to have the attitude, I've come too far to stop now. I've been through too much to back down. I realize that there, the intensity that is on my life and around my life has it, been turned up because I'm about to give birth to my dreams. And, and, and many of you know, it's, it's like the woman who's having a baby. The first month or two, now, from what you all tell me, now, don't be sending me nothing. I'm going to what you ladies have told me. And I talked to my wife. You, know, you, know, you, know, you have a glow about you. that. That glow don't last. The glow leaves when you start to show. You're like, you know, you're, you're a little more agitated. But the first, you know, month or two, no big deal. This is kind of easy. Like, I think I'm going to be pregnant like 10 times. But, but a few months into it, she starts to gain weight. She starts to carry around a few pounds. Um, to match your husband. Her feet swell up. Her back hurts. She got some nausea. She got some morning sickness. And by the eighth and ninth month, husbands, you know better. That's when you save your money and you go to the extended stay. And you drop in the morning and at night to get her up, help put the kids down, and give her her space. Because you don't mess with mama on the eighth and ninth month. You, you, you don't talk back to her because you, you might draw back. You might have nine fingers when it's all done. You just do what she says, and, and nobody's going to get hurt. And it gets more and more uncomfortable. But then the water breaks, and then she goes into labor. And all those other troubles seem insignificant compared to the difficulty of giving birth. I remember when Jeannie was in, was in labor with, uh, with our firstborn, Hannah. She was in labor for 27 hours. I was like, that's a record, because that's how long I'd spent at a Chinese buffet one time. It was a, it was a crazy time. <laughs> a little bit of levity. Uh, maybe half that time. But it, it was long. I knew it was bad when I'm trying to coach, and I'm exhausted from helping her breathe. Like, come on, baby. I'm like, I got I to sit down. 
I mean, I'm getting about 150 beats a minute right now. I mean, I'm burning calories. I mean, I mean this, this, this coaching is tough. I don't know how about your feeling, but I'll tell you, it's, 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 it's hard. And then she pushed for over two hours. But frustration and temptation melted when we heard the cry of that first baby. And I went over the corner and I cried for 15 minutes. When you heard that, but over. I, it, it didn't matter. The previous 27 hours, two hours, mainly with her. I mean, I did nothing. All melted away when you heard the miracle. And when that miracle was placed in your hands. And truth be told, if, if a woman is in labor and had a choice, she'd probably say, I don't want to push anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. It's too difficult. I can't stand it. But she doesn't have a choice. And the doctor and the nurse and, and, and the husband is saying, push, push. And before too long, she pushes that baby out. Yet yeah, in, in a few more, in a few moments, she forgets all the pain. And it is the same principle in life, and God's trying to teach you the same thing with the miracle that he's having you give birth to. The greatest difficulty is right before the birth. Because before we see a new level of God's favor, don't be surprised, church, if things begin to come against you at a proliferated level and proliferated um, rate. Because people will try to talk you out of your dreams. They'll try and steal your dreams. They'll take things you've shared in confidence, and they'll put you on blast. Come on. You know I ain't the only one. Whether they have your last name, but they don't. And they may mean well or whatnot, but, you, but God's using all of that to set you up, to align your heart, because he wants to make sure that you are more pure in your heart than you've ever been because it's the pure in heart, Matthew 5, that see God. And some of you right now, you don't even realize it, but you're in labor. You're about to give birth to what God's put in your heart. And this is, listen, this is why it is such a struggle. Hear me. You are in, this, you are in the stages of your final push. And maybe at work, maybe you're, you've done the right thing. I know most of you have, and I'm so proud of you. Keep doing it. Keep going the extra mile. But you got passed over for that promotion, and now you want to be bitter. Now you're ticked off. Now you're upset. And it wasn't fair. And it wasn't fair. You are right. But why was that? Labor pain. Just you push through it. Maybe you want to start, out, start a new business, but your partner backed out. The financing didn't come through. And you, and you know that you know that God told you to do this business. What was that? Another labor pain. You keep pushing. You keep believing. You keep hoping. Before long, like that woman, you're going to push that promise out. I know some of you today, the struggle has never been so difficult in your entire life. Maybe in your finances or in your health or in your relationship. You can say, Matt, this is the greatest attack I've ever faced. But instead of getting down church and thinking, poor old me, I want to encourage you to turn it around and say, yes, this is the greatest attack. I admit that, but I'm not putting my faith in that. But I know that that means I'm headed for the greatest victory I've ever seen. That's what I believe for you. That's what I believe for this church, that we haven't seen nothing yet as we stay faithful and we push because we are in the final stages of seeing our miracle pushed out and experiencing all that he's had, had a store for us for quite some time. Amen. Remember, it's always darkest before the dawn. And you are about to give birth to that promise. I came across a story about a man who was in Colorado. And he got up early one morning to go for a hike. And there was this mountain trail about three miles up and, and at the base. And there was a sign that said it should take about three hours to get to the top. When he looked at that mountain, it was kind of intimidating. It was, it was very, very steep. Um, but also he had the altitude. Even at the base, it was 8,000 um, feet above sea level. And it went up to nearly 11,000 feet. Just walking up the stairs, he could feel himself breathing heavier, heavier than normal. The first 15 minutes seemed really, really easy. The next 15 minutes got a little bit more difficult. He was breathing heavier. He had to stop every so often to catch his breath. About 45 minutes in, the trail got extremely steep, almost like he was climbing straight up. Now, keep in mind, this person was in good shape. He was a runner, but his legs are burning. His chest is pounding, and he thought to himself, if there's another two hours like this, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And he just got over this big ridge, and he had to stop and, and, and catch his breath, and he could feel just sweat just pouring off of his body the whole time, all morning. And the entire climb, he hadn't seen a single solitary soul on this little path he was on. About that time, an older gentleman came around the curb, he's coming around the mountain. And he said one little phrase that totally changed this individual's perspective. He didn't know where he was headed. He didn't even know what he was thinking. But as the older gentleman passed, this younger man, he smiled and said in a real calm voice, you're closer than you think. 
And when he said that, it was like new life was breathed into this guy's lungs. He could feel strength going into his legs. He felt energy coming into his body. And he got that second wind like some of you are getting ready to experience today in Jesus' name. And from then on out, with every stride, he kept telling himself, I'm closer than I think. Even though it was difficult, even though he was hurting, he kept saying, I am almost to the top. I'm going to make it. And sure enough, just 10 minutes later, he came over those big boulders and he could see the top. And he made it in just under an hour. So watch my message. Without the words of the older gentleman, the younger man might have turned around without his encouragement, without his insight. And the guy might have talked himself out of experiencing all that he saw at the very, very top. After all, he thought he had two more hours to go when he only had just 10 more minutes. I believe that God, I believe with all my heart, God is telling you and I the very same thing today, that you are closer than you think. I don't know where you're headed. I don't know what your dreams are. I don't know how many obstacles that you've had to overcome, but I pray that you would let these words sink deep down into your spirit and you would receive them by faith, that you are closer than you think. In fact, I want you just to declare it over yourself today. Say, I am closer than I think. I am closer than I think. I'm pushing forward. I'm trusting Jesus in Jesus' name. And you begin to say, your, say that to yourself. Now, and when you're at intersections, when you're at the stoplight, right before you go into certain meetings with HR, your boss, or your employees, you are closer than you think. And build yourself up. There's a real, I'm, I'm a real I'm a dear friend of, to my wife and I and our family. This is years ago, and she had left her previous job, and there was some confusion um, with her health benefits. She had a 30-day um, grace period and covered some medication. Medication cost $39,000, and her health insurance was responsible for nine grand. She discovered she was given a 30-day grace period, and the health insurance expected her to pay $9,000. She said that she could sell it for $2,000, which is all she had. She didn't have the full amount. And on a Friday morning years ago, she texted my wife and asked, what options does she have? I told Jenny, you, you need to call the insurance company, company and act as a mediator. They would not hear our plea for mercy and said there's nothing they can do and that this bill would be turned over to a collection agency in 30 days. Sounds like you got a hope. Three hours later, three hours, this rep called this young lady and said that she had spoke with her director again and they agreed to set up for $2,000. Something she thought was absolutely unachievable, no way possible. In a matter of moments, God had turned it around for her favor. See, what I'm trying to tell you is now is not the time to talk yourself out of what God has you in. Now is not the time to get discouraged. You may think you're, you're, you're not even, even halfway there. You've got too far to go, but you don't know. It may be just around the corner. You may think you've got another two years, but if you stay in faith, who knows? It might just be two more months. You have struggled with this addiction since you were a teenager, and you don't know how close, you, you don't even know how close right now you are to breaking free and experiencing all that God has for you. Stay in faith. Stay encouraged because you're closer than you think. Amen. God is wanting to breathe new life into every single one of your dreams. He's wanting to breathe new hope into your heart. And some of you are about to give up on your marriage. And your spouse doesn't even know what, what's been going on in your heart. They don't, they don't know about the, the issues, the agitation, the addictions. And you're close to giving up on your marriage, on your children, on your goal. But God is trying to tell you, and I believe get your attention today and say, if you get your second win, if you put on a new attitude, if you press forward like you're heading down the final stretch, you're going to see me do amazing things. Don't you dare give up. This is not the time to give up in life, in marriage, your spirituality, your emotional health. God's got something greater for you than you ever thought possible, but it is up to you to press into Jesus. I know you may be tired. You may be tempted to feel discouraged. I'm sorry you're going through that. I really am. But I'm not going to encourage you to stay there. You've got to learn to shake that off and start talking to yourself. And again, not talking to your mind. This is what got me into a lot of issues for quite some time uh, a few years ago, even up into maybe recently. I would, I would get into thoughts that I would have, I would have um, um, dialogue internally. And it got me into a lot of strongholds. And I lost, for a little bit, I lost my voice. The Bible didn't say think to your mountain. It said speak to your mountain. Your spirit, man, needs to hear your spirit speak something. Because faith cometh by hearing, not thinking. And too many of you are wrapped up in thoughts. 
Way too many thoughts that are, leaving you, that are leading you waywardly. And God is trying to get you to step up and trust and speak to any and every amount in your life. And you have, every one of you, if you've got air in your lungs, you've got the ability to speak to any amount right now. And if you're not experiencing breakthrough, it's either because it's not time yet, or more times than not, it's probably because you're not speaking to it. You're just, quit trying to take care of everybody else's mountains. What's that, Matt? Tell them how to raise their kids. Tell them that they, aren't, they don't have good theology. Tell them that they should be doing this, that, and the other. Just focus on you. Amen. Pray for them. Absolutely. You got a car? Stay in your lane. It's, it's, when, it's, when, you, it's, it's, when, it's when you It's when you. It's when you do this and you look over your shoulder. You, you listen, some of you are causing too many inter- problems at the intersection. Just stop, drop, pray, and move on. Quit telling everybody else. I tell you, your training's out of, you know, out of sea. Your tires need help. Your kids are jacked up. Your spouse... You're 85 years old and you've never been single. You have no idea what it's like to raise kids. So bless the people. Or, or, you, know, or you might be married at 25 and you're trying to give advice to someone who's 38 and still saving themselves. You have no idea what they're going through. Just love people where they're at. Speak truth when asked. But too many of us get out of our lane because we're doing things that we weren't assigned to do with tools that aren't even from him for us to use. And then we, want, then we want to blame him and get all upset and go to Facebook. Oh, Jesus. I don't know why he's letting it happen to me. You did it. Um, I got news for you. Uh, the devil's bad. He ain't that big and bad. Most of the problems we go through, the devil calls. I mean, the devil didn't cause you cause. You get pulled over, 55 and a 20. I don't know why in the world the devil's trying to get a hold of me today. I don't know why in the world I'm discouraged. I know it's, I know, I know, yeah, I know, I, I know it's a school zone, but I had places I had to be. I was on assignment from Jesus. You were dumb. We love you. God bless you. Probably can't help you with that ticket. You'll need a lawyer. You were dumb. And God forgives you for being dumb. Don't blame the devil for being dumb. Is he dumb? Yes, he is. But it looks like you got a little piece of him as well. But it wasn't his fault. Let's move on. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is, and some of you are upset, and I'm sorry you're going through it. I really, really am. But weeping, Psalms 30 verse 5 says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You've got, listen, church, you've got to get up each day knowing that this could be the day that this is the break you need. This could be the day you see your health turn on. Some of you have been believing God for things in your body, things in your home, things in your life. You're like, I don't know why. And some of you are like, it's been five days. Some of you are like, it's been five years. Some people are like, it's been five decades. Keep believing. I don't know what's going to happen, but today could be the day it all changes. And you'll you'll forget about all the labor pains prior to this day. And you'll begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I'm I'm so glad you were faithful even when I wasn't. But I'm so glad somehow, someway, I stayed in the game. I stayed in my lane and I give you glory because I was closer than I thought. But now I'm in it and I'm so glad I never left. You single people, this could be the day you meet the man or woman of of your dreams. Stay faithful. Stay connected. Don't sell yourself short. Don't go tenderize your soul. A little, a little play on that. Yeah, stay away from Ashley Madison. You're like, what? Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, you don't even need to go there. Yeah, let's, let, let, let's stay on point. I'm going to stay in my lane. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Zechariah 9 12 says this that we should be prisoners of hope. Is it easy to give up? It sure is. It don't take much. It takes one thought. And we're ready, to, we're ready to just absolutely leave everything that God's been doing and everything we've been believing for. It's easy to get discouraged. But God wants you and I so full of hope, so full of expectancy that we just can't, believe, we, we just can't help ourselves. We believe for the best. Yeah, you're going to be one of those jacked up for Jesus believers. You know, they just seem giddy. Um, you mean joyful? I guess so. Why are you going to be happy all the time? Because I tried miser- misery and it, wasn't, it didn't work. See, when you're a prisoner of something, it's like you're chained to it. So in other words, um, you can't get away from it. I know people, I've been there, that are prisoners of fear and worry, prisoners of doubt. And, and, and you've heard them. Nothing good ever happens to me. It's never going to change. This is my lot in life. Matt, it's been too long. God don't hear me. God forgot about me. Well, you're having what you speak. 
You're having what you believe. You've been believing. You've just been believing the, the wrong kingdom. No, no. You've been chained to the wrong thing. Today, in Jesus' name, I want to encourage you to break those chains and become a prisoner of hope. That means no matter how long it's taking, no matter how impossible it looks, listen, your attitude will be, I can't help it, but I just know it's going to work out. Have you seen how crazy things are? I just know God's got it. I don't care what happens. God's going to take care of every bill, every situation. He's going to take care of my kids, my babies, my spouse. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. How? Because I'm a prisoner of hope. And when you live that way, that means you're ever so close to victory. Somebody says to you, uh, what, what is it with you? You think everything's going to work out. You think everything's going to succeed. You just tell them, I don't think so. I know so. I'm a prisoner of hope. You tell them, I can't get away from this stuff. I've tried misery for 20 years. I love this hope stuff. I love being joyful. Peace looks good on me. I just can't let myself get negative. I can't let myself start complaining. I've got to get, listen, I've got this hope that's feeding my faith, this hope that's constantly lifting my spirits, and it can change you too. Let me just lay hands on you and pray for you. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, hey. Okay, well, maybe next time. Um, there was a lady that came into a revival meeting and was scheduled for a double mastectomy and had cancer in both breasts. She was a nurse by trade and had to quit her job. She got prayed for because she never gave up because you never know when it's going to be the day. God completely healed her and cancer no longer lived in her body. Amen. She went back to her boss in Alabama and said, I'm ready to start work. He said, uh, what about the treatment? She said, I don't have cancer no more. He said, uh, did they misdiagnose you? She said, nope, God healed me. He said, prove it. See, what the enemy is asking most of you to do today is prove it. And too many of us have backed away and backed down from that challenge, not the day devil. She went and got both medical reports and gave them to her boss who was an OBGYN. He looked at both reports and with tears in his eyes, he said, I've been a Muslim my entire life. And my God has never healed anybody. He said, if your God is a healing God, I want your God to be my God. She leads him to the Lord, and he gives gives his heart and life to Jesus right there. He also, at the time, owned the only functioning abortion clinic in northern Alabama. She said, "Um, um, now that you've gotten saved, I want to show you some things in the Bible. He closes down the abortion clinic. Tears his license to perform abortions in front of her and says, Jesus is my God. I will never murder another baby. Again, just to make sure we're clear. The woman that got healed gets a call from the assistant of the oncology doctor that was preparing to treat her for cancer. and said, we'd like to offer you a job. She said, I've already got a job. She said, no, we want you to come in for an interview. She said, I'm perfectly happy with the job I've got. She said, our doctor would like you to consider about having a job here. Again, she said, I'm perfectly happy with the job I have. And she began to get a little irritated. Later on, um, the man that owned the oncology practice called her and said, I want you to come interview for a job here. She said, sir, I've already spoken with your assistant, and I've told her I'm more than happy with where I'm at. He said, I'll give you $3 more an hour than you're making right now, and I'll give you more benefits than you've ever had. She said, I'm perfectly happy with the job I have. He said, you don't understand. I'm trying to pay you to come pray with people for cancer all day. I don't need another nurse. I need an intercessor that will walk up and down these hallways, in and out of these hospitals, proclaiming and praying firmly the power of God. Let me tell you, you know you're in the right spot when the, you know what, when where you are at, God begins to bless you and give you a salary to begin to pray for people. Hey, when the world begins to see what God's been capable of the entire time, you know they'll want you on their payroll. Now understand this. You may not see any of this in the natural. It may not look like any of it's going to come to pass. That's okay. The scripture says that we walk by faith and not by sight. That means we don't have to see it to believe it. It's just the opposite. If we'll believe it, we'll start to see it. And some of you need to take those dreams, those promises that God has put in your heart, and every day during your private encounters and outside of your private encounters, declare that they're going to come to pass. Just say something like this, Father, I want to thank you that my payday is coming. You said that no good thing will you withhold because I walk upright. I believe that even right now, right now in Jesus' name, you are arranging things in my favor. Let me ask you, are you a pris- what are you a prisoner of? Are you a prisoner of worry, of self-pity? of fear, of negativity. Break those chains today and become a prisoner of hope. Expect God's favor, city center. Believe that he's working in your life, even right now. I'll close with this. You know, I read where they had done an experiment with rats. 
And the researchers wanted to see how their attitude um, affected their will to live. So they took this rat and they put it in a large tub of water with high sides so that it couldn't get out. They put the tub in a completely dark room and timed how long the rat, rat would keep swimming before he gave up. The rat lasted a little over three minutes. Then they put another rat in the same tub, but this time they allowed a bright ray of light to shine into the room. That rat swam 36 hours, 700 times more than the rat with no light. Why was that? The rat with no light had no hope. And when he looked into his future, he didn't see anything. There wasn't anything worth living. And that's what happens when, listen, this, this is what happens when we don't get up expecting God's favor. Knowing that you and I can overcome every single obstacle. Believing God who's in control. Because if we lose our passion, we lose our enthusiasm. And this is why it's so incredibly important, especially in times of difficulty. To keep reminding yourself that the creator of the universe is directing our steps. Listen, he has you in the palm of his hands. And even though what you're going through right now is extremely difficult, he knows that. It's just a matter of time before things turn around. And you know that your payday is coming. Some of you are about to give up on your dream and you know it's been too long. You think it's never going to change. It's never going to work out. Listen, it is time to get your fire back. Listen, I, I pray you hear me. It is time, it's time, high time to begin to fan the flame of that dream because it is, it is still alive. It is not dead. It's still there. And the good news is God has a way to bring every dream in your heart to pass. And your situation will try to tell you differently. Man will try to convince you otherwise. But may you never forget that God's in control. And today I'm asking you to be a prisoner of hope. I'm encouraging you to get up every day expecting God's favor. And when those negative thoughts come and it looks impossible and you just keep feeling more and more discouraged, just keep telling yourself, I'm closer than I think. Right now, the creator of the universe is lining things up in my favor. The right people, the right breaks, the right opportunities. You might say, Matt, I've been through a lot. I've been through some tough times. You have no idea. And you're right, I don't. You've been through tough things, but don't stay there. Put on the right attitude because disappointments are for a season, but God's favor is for a lifetime. I heard about this man who had a picture in his office. It was a, of a large rowboat that had washed up on the beach. And the two oars were, were resting gently on the sand. You could see the ocean off in the distance about 20 or 30 feet away. The boat was just too heavy to drag, too big to move. It was just kind of sitting there stuck. And it had washed up during the high tide and now it was stranded. And to be honest, the picture wasn't very beautiful. It wasn't even inspiring. In fact, most people would tell you it was depressing. <laughs> Here this boat that was created to live in the water and dance on top of the ocean. It was sitting there lifeless, no energy, stuck in the sand. But at the very bottom of the picture, there was a small caption. If you didn't look at it carefully, you'd miss it. And the caption read, the tide always comes back. What's the message? When the tide comes back, the seemingly helpless, lifeless boat will get a new beginning. It comes back to life. A friend saw the picture and said, why'd you put this up in your office? It's beyond depressing. The man told him how he had gone through so much disappointment. He didn't think he'd ever be happy again. And he saw this pain, you know, this small pain in an antique store. He just bought it for a few dollars. Nobody else wanted it. It was too discouraging to look at. And he said, every time I looked at it, I said to myself, the tide is coming back. What was he doing? He was speaking faith in his heart. He was saying, I'm closer than I think. Things are changing in my favor. And you may be here and you may be stuck as well. Stuck and stranded. Things aren't going your way. You don't have the energy and the enthusiasm you once did. Can I just prophesy over you in this church that the tide for you in this church is coming back like never before? God is breathing new life into your dreams. You're going to feel the wind of the Spirit lift you, and you're going to begin to sail once again, not just endure life, not just barely get by, but to dance on top of the waves. Waves and things that you've been living under, you're going to begin to dance on top of them in Jesus' name. You've got to start telling yourself every day, my tide is coming back. I'm closer than I think. It may be difficult, but the good news is that difficulty means you're close to your victory. So don't give up on your dream city center church. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on that healthy life. Listen, it may be difficult, but remember, there's a reward for staying in faith. God promises you your payday is on its way. And if you'll learn to become a prisoner of hope, get up every day expecting God's favor, you'll see God do amazing things. You'll overcome every obstacle. You'll defeat every enemy. And I believe and I declare, you'll see every dream, every promise God's put in your heart, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, right now, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your power and your presence. We thank you for your strength. Father, as we surrender our um, these remaining moments to you, I thank you for speaking to us. Holy Spirit, what is it that you would like us to learn from this? That's our prayer. And I thank you that you'll show us 
what to do. Most importantly, may we become a prisoner of hope like never before. If you're here this morning, I'm going to be real quick just for sake of time. And you're not where you should be with Jesus. You're a prisoner of things that aren't from Jesus. You're not a prisoner of hope. You're a prisoner of hopelessness. You're a prisoner of sin. You're a prisoner of addiction or whatever it might be. And you and Jesus, you just know it. You're not connected. You're not living a life that pleases him. I want to pray for you right where you're at. If you say, Matt, that's me. Would you pray for me? Would you mind just shooting up your hand long enough for me to recognize it? Matt, I need to make things right with Jesus before I leave. God bless you. God bless you. Who else? Thank you. Who else? Oh, in the very back. Absolutely. Right here in the middle. Thank you, man. Anybody else? Over here. Thank you. All right. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I believe you sent Jesus. And I believe in him. I confess to you all my sin. And I receive by faith the payment for my sin. In Jesus' name. Um, Pastor Kirk's going to come along here in a little bit and give you some instruction. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to elaborate on what I said last week. There's very few places where God gives you a, a bumper-to-bumper guarantee in the Bible. I mean, yes, he's going to take care of things, but like, it's like, if you do this, I'll make sure you don't lose your reward. City Kid is one of the greatest places to serve and to honor our king. And if you don't like kids, ask God to help you with it. If you're not serving somewhere, definitely you need to repent and ask God to help you with it. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to push you towards Jesus. And again, there are, there are times, listen, some people have been burned by church. I've talked to people even recently. And they, they've just gone through it. They're just kind of, right now, they're kind of sitting and recovering. Absolutely. But let's not sit and recover for 15 to 20 years. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry that you've got some church hurt, that people or the pastors or other, other individuals have hurt you. Eventually, there will come a time, a point where we trust Jesus. We're going to get back in the game. We're going to be healthy again. And God's going to help us. Amen. Amen. But in Matthew 10. One of the greatest verses that um, one of my pastors, Pastor Willie George, ever taught me. He said, if you give a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, you'll by no means lose your reward. When you serve kids, as crazy as it might be, and, and men, I'm definitely talking to you. I, I'm, I'm impressed that you can lift 315 pounds. Can you lift a two-year-old that isn't yours? I'm impressed by your car collection. But I'd love to see you help with somebody else's kids and teach them what a real man looks like because those two kids are with a mama who's doing her absolute best because she was walked out on by those kids' daddy. That's, when you, that, 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 that's what really shows, shows me. Again, I'm not saying every man has to go back there and serve. Please don't hear me say that. But I refuse to have a children's ministry as it is the most churches that is overwhelmingly dominated by females. That speaks volumes about the heart of the men in that church. Amen. I'm going to encourage you to step up, and I'm going to encourage all of you to do one thing. I'm not asking you to follow my instructions. I'm not asking you to go fill out anything. I'm asking you to pray. And even even right now, even inside, say, Lord, is this where you want me? Where do you want me? Is City Kids a place that you want me? It's an amazing opportunity that you have when you give your time and you come to serve and not live to be served because that's the life of Jesus. He came to give his life a ransom for many. And that's the goal and that's the role we have in this life. I love you guys. God bless you. See you.